and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a couple returning good brothers to the temple. In the red corner, we have Tony O, Tony Oliveira. And in the blue corner, we have David Soruko. I'm probably butchering it again. How how you two doing, man? Doing well, good. Mm-hmm. So the names were were spot on. I think yeah. the, the mine was right. Dave's was close, if not right. <laughs> Look, it's been like almost a year since I had you guys on. If you can pronounce Oliveira, you're doing good. It's, it's not an easy name. But thanks for having us back. Yeah, thanks for coming back on. And actually, I have to correct myself. It's been about two years. Oh, really? I'm surprised. Yeah, because last, the last time I had you on was for Fully Armored. Ah, uh, yeah. It's been two years ago. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Time flies. Yes, it does. But now, now it now the sub the subject matter is Uncle Ermy's ARM summer catalog. Yep, we are kickstarting that one now. It's mm. uh, our our newest Battle Wars book, although it's completely compatible with Savage Worlds. It's a collection of Ernie's bioengineered and cybernetically augmented killing machines that mm -hmm. you can throw at your players for fun and entertainment. So mostly for funsies. I suppose I suppose the first thing we should get we should get into is what um ARM is meant to stand for in the Battle Lords universe. Sure. Uh a ARM is an acronym because they call themselves ARM, but it's an acronym for Anarchist Rebellion Movement and it's Ernie's organization. Uh he when he creates these monsters for lack of a better term, uh ARM uh is the is the company that sells them to the highest bidder. Uh, or sometimes just distributes them randomly to see how they work uh, on unsuspecting planets. And uh, yeah, ARM sells them all over the galaxy for whoever wants them. Mm -hmm. And for a fee, can even ship to other galaxies. Yeah, just expect, th expect three to eight years for delivery. <laughs> yes, yeah, you think shipping's expensive now, yeah. Wait till the 23rd century. Mm-hmm. So, given given that, <clears throat> when it comes to a lot of a lot of the monsters with that are within, it, were th were these monsters that have been um, specifically made for this catalog, or some or some of them holdovers from the past um, history of Battle Lords? Abe, you want to feel that one? Sure, uh, it's a mix. Um, the iconic uh, kaiju is back. Uh, it is named the Sucks to Be You S U C S Two B U because if you run into it, the name is appropriate. You better wear the brown pants. Yep. <laughs> and uh, there are also a number of new critters that we've uh, created for this, so kind of a mix of both. Um, it's definitely not uh, for those who are familiar with the prior editions and might be familiar with Uncle Ernie's Minions of Doom. It's not going to be exactly the same as that um but you'll definitely have a lot of critters that uh are going to be a lot of fun to cause all kinds of mayhem and chaos mm -hmm. and speak speaking of that if somebody has the old minions of doom um book um do you plan on having having a bit of conversion advice for that kind of thing or has that already been covered and i just wasn't aware there is a conversion guide for prior versions of Battle Lords to 7th edition. Um, they, there's a bit of hand-waving involved because we switched some stuff around, so it's not a direct conversion, but we give some guidelines. Uh, the, the, uh, the new version uh, that, that we're working on now is for 7th edition Battle Lords and Savage Worlds, and it will have stats for both systems for each monster. Mm-hmm. Now, given the particular brand of dry, of dry and semi-dry humor that permeates the Battle Lords universe, 
are you is that going to be continued on through the comments and descriptions of each of the monsters within this um catalog a hundred percent i think i think catalog, it's fair mm -hmm. yeah yeah the, the catalog is basically designed if you had like a, a 1980s version of the sears catalog that sold horrific killing machines living killing machines and then you kind of gave it a futuristic twist mm -hmm. that's sort of what you're getting so it's it's for the reader of the catalog it's the, for, of the book it is presented like a catalog of ernie's wares and ernie and his marketing guys at arm have done the descriptions of the creatures so yes you should you should expect a heaping healthy dose of ernie's dark humor throughout the book if I do, if I'd use a modern example, would it be akin to the Uline catalog that's all over the place? Yes, yeah, so only more dangerous. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know. People find a way to make cardboard dangerous. You can see the giant asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> but since you mentioned that this is going to be using, um. At um, rules adaptation for both the X-150 system that's used in Battle Lord 7th and Savage Worlds. Were there, in, were there any instances where a particular entry was easy to work with in one, but a little bit trickier to work in the other? Well, Savage Worlds is a little more streamlined than classic Battle Lords, uh, which is one of the reasons we adapted the Battle Lord setting for it. So if you want your tactical crunchy, you go with classic battle lords if you want your quote fast fun furious you can do savage worlds mm -hmm. um in most cases in terms of developing the creatures it was easier for the savage worlds because they have so many edges and special abilities already in place for creatures and characters so a lot of times we could just adopt those but in terms of presenting the information a lot of times it was easier for classic battle lords because we've got more stats in classic battle lords so you didn't necessarily need a special ability to represent something for in classic battle lords where there's a stat that could represent it but mm -hmm. in savage worlds you, it, you, you needed a special ability to show that mm -hmm. and from what i from what i understand just looking at some of the examples that are that are given the monsters that are in are in this are going to vary in size. There's obviously in the sucks to be you men mentioned earlier that is going to be kaiju size to the point where um, somebody's going to channel Pacific Rim running it. But it's it sounds like that there's also some that are a lot smaller comparatively. Uh, yeah, they go from uh, very small to very big um, on the small side. They're more in the let's gang up on you and take you out kind of a size, um, fun size. Um, a lot of things are kind of close-ish to typical humanoid sizes. You know, think, think uh, humans to ram pythons, for those who don't know. Think uh, Andre the Giant, but bigger, like 10 foot tall, 5 feet wide, full of teeth and angry. Um <laughs> So a lot of things fall into that category, but there are some things that are just huge. Mm -hmm. When you said Andre the Giant, but bigger, I was going to say, so Giant Gonzalez, but competent. Yes. <laughs> Only with sharp, nasty teeth and claws, <laughs> scales. And not, and not, horf, and not um, having a bodysuit that's going to live in my nightmares. <laughs> Seriously, what the hell were they thinking with that? But there are there are a few there are a few entries that are name dropped um, in the in the Kickstarter that I did want to kind of go into as far as what it is, what makes it deadly, and how screwed somebody is if they end up running into it. Um, starting with the Blood Warlock. Yeah, so the Blood War Warlock is one of the bioengineered plagues that Ernie. Uh, created years ago, probably I'd have to look at the timeline. At least a decade ago. So it's it's not in the arm catalog, other than in the introductions where Ernie is proudly listing his accolades and achievements. Mm -hmm. um, and the Blood Warlock killed millions of people. Um, so that yeah, that one is is not statted. Um, we didn't put a lot of 
what I would call like plagues or viruses or even small small animal swarms in the book. We wanted to focus on things that people, for lack of a better term, could get punched in the face by. Yeah. Uh, I did notice in the in that spread of of some of the entries, the first the first one on the top left looks like a ferret from hell. <laughs> Oh, that's one of Dave's favorites. I love my MD Wraith cats. They're wonderful. You're the first person who hasn't said I want to have it as a pet or pick it up and hug it. <laughs> that's a good thing, by the way. You really don't want to get that close to these. Um, are you familiar? So one of the fun things that made making these critters a lot of fun is that uh, we all, uh, particularly Tony and I, have a lot of background in, in biology and different things that are out there in flora and fauna on the uh, on the earth and their inspiration for neat things. So are you familiar with a plant called the Gimpy Gimpy? I think I've it's heard Australian the name once, once or twice and yeah, of course it's of course it's Australian. <laughs> of course it's Australian. Yes, it, it, it basically uh, is covered in silica tipped hairs that contain a neurotoxin which will release for months causing excruciating anguish uh, and pain uh, and uh, yeah, it's bad. Well, the uh, empty wraith cats have quills on their tails that do the same thing, and they can face their armor, so you may find it in your armor. Mm -hmm. um, which is not too surpri not too surprising because because if armor if armor could deal with it, it wouldn't be as much of a threat. Yeah, we had to, in addition to changing sizes of the creature, so you had a variety, we also had to adjust threat levels. Because pretty much everybody in Battle Arts has armor. So we had to have things that you fight with a pointy stick all the way to the things that you can fight if you're in uh, ultra armor, which is essentially mecha. Yeah. So, yeah. And it, look, it looks, like you have some, looks like you have some that are a bit more um, phasing than, than others. There's one, there's one that's in the, um, in the, up, in the second in the second row. On that same image. Let me take a look. What's it look like generally? I'll load up the picture. Take a peek. Um, the it's that blue it's that bluish one that almost looks like it's a ghost. Oh, kind of look like a sea slug. Let me grab the picture yeah. here. Yeah, that's our uh, ghost banshee. Uh, so they essentially float. They're lighter than air, mm -hmm. so they can. And they're filled with hydrogen. You can see where that's probably going. Uh, and they float around and they're territorial and anything that gets too close to them, they blast with a, uh, an ultrasonic, uh, uh, attack. And if you happen to shoot them or hit them with a laser or something like that, uh, they, they burst into flames, which is fun because their other method of attack is to cling to you and your armor. Uh, so at which point you probably don't want it to burst into flames. Uh, that might be an occupational hazard. Uh, and I also see on the on the top um, right you have what looks what looks like the unholy combination of a lobster and a centipede. Centipede. Yeah, that's that's the yeah. Dave, you want to cover the plasma pede? I, I think you did a pretty good job describing it already. It's, it's kind of an <laughs> unholy union. Um, the uh, the only thing you missed was, um, yeah, and it shoots plasma bolts out of its, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, stinger claw things. Mm -hmm. That's a technical term. Yeah. <laughs> and that that's an example of one that is, I, mean, I think it's 15 meters long. So it's designed to kill tanks. Yeah. Ernie basically chopped off its claws and replaced them with pulse combat systems. So mm -hmm. it's like it's equipped with four tank guns. And I'd, I'd imagine there's a fair, there's a decent mix of things that are deadly, but ju but but natural slash biological, and then there's things that were upgraded with various forms of tech. Yep, yeah, Ernie upgrades a lot of his critters. Um, I would say fact, most. Yeah. Go ahead. Say if you look. If you look at the image on the bottom on the on the bottom row, second from the right, you can even see on the horn thingy that comes up. If you look in, if you look at that real close, you'll see little uh, technology stuff bolted onto the front of its forehead, basically. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely see that bi that biology background because there's some 
strange and in, and interesting bits of violence just just in the natural world. I mean, whenever whenever I whenever I ask people what the most violent um at what the most violent animal is to, towards it, e either to others or to or to its own kind, most people will say things like bears or tigers or lions or even humans. They're all wrong. The correct answer is the meerkat. Hmm. Is the, Enough. Which is not too surprising when you consider its relatives. One of them is the hyena. And the other is um, mongoose. You know that animal that's had a blood feud with with snakes for centuries. Yes. Oh. So I don't want to date date myself, but yeah, when I was little, I grew up reading Ricky Ticky Tabby. So there, mm -hmm. <laughs> just give you some give your listeners some idea how old I am. But yeah, there's a manga story. Yeah. And of course. But even 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 outside of that, there's ca there's cases of that bit of, of that bit of crazy, like say how, um, whenever, whenever um sharks get near orcas, sharks want to get the hell out of dodge. Yeah, there's a lot of critters in the book where, uh, the main thing Ernie did to them was just dial up their natural aggression. Mm -hmm. He might add a tweak here or there, but, um, there's a lot of them where he you'll you'll see in the comments. Where when Ernie's talking about them, where he's made them, made them naturally more aggressive, even though they were already naturally aggressive. Yeah, because well, just a, just yeah. in a general a general rule, the the galaxy that that is the staging ground for battle lords is already a place where anything and everything wants to kill you, and the stuff that doesn't want to use is busy fighting over who gets to kill you. Pretty much, yeah. Life, life is cheap and uh, and short. Yeah, if I had, if I had to use a analogy, I don't. I'd bring up the um, death worlds that are in Warhammer 40k, where call, calling them call, calling them a place where the where the, where everything wants to kill you is almost quaint. But and I'm I'm. I'm guessing that with with some of them there are there are variants, especially once we're dealing with adding technology to these things. Yeah, the the that was one thing we kind of changed from the old Uncle Ernie's, which was like circa 1993. Is it had variants for most of the creatures in the book, but because we were presenting stats for two different systems and we wanted it to look like a catalog. Um, we pretty much stuck to uh, just the one version of each creature with stat blocks for both systems. There are a few exceptions. Yeah, and I, I can I can definitely understand that because doing more variants would mean doing slightly different versions of the same creature and, and different art pieces, and that's that's a redundancy waiting to happen. Yeah, and uh, yeah, people don't understand how expensive art is for role-playing game books it's it's probably always our number one expense we don't uh print enough copies to where the printing cost exceeds the art cost yet we're getting there uh especially with the savage worlds version of battle lords but uh yeah the art is a significant portion of the other book costs and that's probably the the main factor on determining how many critters we can get in there yeah, because it, it says on the Kickstarter you you've got about thirty five that you're going to be putting in. Oh. Yep, and we just published the uh, the list of names and the uh, update number three on the Kickstarter. So if people want to see the uh, the names of them, we've got them got them yeah. in there. And speaking speaking of that, and I, I saw that you referred to it as a um, inventory list. Yes. Now, obviously, go, obviously, going into all of them would be would be a bit redu would be a bit redundant and a bit spoilery. So, I'll I'll go I'll go into a few where I'm where I'd like to see what the 
what what um is entailed by the name for them and one one of the one of the big ones that's coming to mind right out right out of the gate is the bad kitty Dave you want to describe bad kitty Bad kitty's not a bad kitty bad kitty's just misunderstood he just like calling faces off <laughs> Yeah Kitty's Kitty's one of the ones that came from the original book too so that's part of the background of him we've tweaked this one a little bit um, to get it to fit with the themes we're looking for right now. So it's definitely more in that cybernetically modified kind of thing. Designed to look like a kitty cat. Oh, you're poor and helpless. Here, let me come feed you. And then it attacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that certainly is going to fit the bill. Uh, I suppose an, another, ex another example would be the um, Jazdarian Slayer or the J Slayer. Yeah, that's another one from the original Uncle Ernie's. Uh, the J Slayer has basically been designed to assassinate things. And uh, it's sort of like if you took a long table and gave it centipede legs and then folded it in half so it was U shaped. Um, it's, it's bizarre looking, but it's, it is venomous. It is kind of vaguely centipede looking uh and it uh like dave's one of dave's other favorites the wraith cats uh it does have the ability to phase through things so it can just walk through solid matter like a ghost uh which makes it particularly dangerous yep um another one would be the murder wabbit <laughs> <laughs> yes we love the murder wabbits so there's a little bit of background on this one so uncle ernie ultimately created one of the species that's playable the fought did that as kind of a F you to the Alliance because so they irritated him. And so he thought, well, you guys are trying to colonize this planet over here. What if it's uh, filled with a whole bunch of sentient creatures that meet all your requirements for entry into the Alliance and they're obnoxious to you. Um, so uh, the uh, murder rabbits are one of the stepping stones he made towards creating the thought. And uh, he, he realized he was onto something different than he intended for the planet, but still useful. And so he came back to it a few years later. He's like, I think I can make something out of this. And uh, so, yeah, they, they, they look cute for a second, and then they turn mean. Mm -hmm. now, We've got some great art people can see of those, I think, on our, on our Twitter page. They look amazing. Oh, yeah. Now, with... Of course, of course, one of the, one of the other ones I was, I was curious about is, is going to be the Screaming Spiker. Yeah, another uh, classic Ernie monster from the original uh, book. Uh, it's, uh, again, one of the last ones that needs to be illustrated. So I, I can't 100% confirm what it's going to look like because we, we tend to give our artists a lot of free reign. But um, it's basically known for having a uh, concussive sonic scream that is not only terrifying to hear and it travels for miles, uh, but if you're close, it can stun you with it. And then it's been, uh, it has these large uh, claws, which Arnie has, Ernie has augmented to make armor piercing. So he, he basically knocks you on your butt and then comes over and turns you into a pin cushion. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the book, are, do you, are, are there plans on putting in some asides on some of the suggested ways to use the monsters? Yeah, the um, uh, each monster has a, basically a catalog description where uh, the our marketing team is trying to sell it to their to their prospective buyers. So they, you know, one of the things we talk about is how much carnage it can cause and and how it does that, uh, and uh, all the things, all the horrible ways it can inflict damage on on people and things uh, as part of the marketing in the catalog. To the to the prospective buyer, who as as the reader, you're getting that same perspective. Uh, so yeah, we 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 don't. It's not presented in a sort of a dry monster manual, Dungeons and Dragons. This is how you should attack with this creature. Uh, it's but it's it's worked into the sort of catalog marketing description of all the critters in the book. 
Mm-hmm. I can I can definitely I can definitely get behind that. And since since it's a catalog, I'm guessing each of them has their own um, price entry just as well. Yep, we give the, uh, uh, the price, the threat level, Dave, what else is in there? Height, weight, some other things. Yeah, height, weight. Um, we usually have kind of some uh, op uh, alternative threat levels uh, as things get added to them. So you can sometimes have uh, you know, variants that are available through the catalog. Um, some of them it can grow quite large. And so there's like, if you get the itty bitty version, which is only as big as a person, that one's kind of dangerous, but when it gets up to the size of, oh, let's call it an RV, then it starts to get a little bit more fun. Uh, so we have some things that go like that as well. We also have, uh, oh, yeah, one of the faves, the identification modifier. How likely is it that you will identify what it is that's about to kill you? Um, and they range in values from easy to identify to hard to identify. And the sex to you has a, don't worry, you'll know it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... I'd, I'd imagine that something as big as the sucks to be you is get, is going to have a price of if you need to ask you probably shouldn't. Pretty pretty accurate. Yep. Which definitely definitely makes sense. Uh, now, since you mentioned that some of these were. Um, car were carryovers from pre from previous incarnations of Uncle Ernie's books. I am curious if you if um when con when converting when converting from previous um incarnations of the X one fifty system to its to its current form, if there were any that were a bit trickier than others to convert. All of them, I had actually. Weird story. Before we took over Battle Wars in 2017, I had actually rewritten almost all of the original Uncle Ernie's for publication for in 6th edition Battle Wars for the guys who were running the game company at that point. Mm -hmm. But um, when we, when Dave and Kurt and I changed it and released Kickstarter, the 7th edition, we made some rules changes. So I had to go in and rewrite like 90% of all of that stuff. Um, but uh, in terms of which ones were hardest to model, um, it's different in both systems. The Sucks to Be You was very difficult to model for Savage Worlds, simply because in Savage Worlds, to keep it fast and furious, so to speak, they um, if you can damage something, it'll, it'll only take a few hits to knock it out, which if you've got a godzilla size kaiju running through town um you, you don't want players to take it out in two or three shots so we had to figure out a work around that for that wouldn't wouldn't bog down uh savage worlds uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the battle wars ones it was just figuring out a bunch of ways that we could bypass the armor players were wearing uh so that we could get higher threat level creatures uh when the players started putting on mechanized battle armor and things like that Mm -hmm. I can I can definitely get behind that. Uh, and since since you mentioned that somebody could use this just as much in Savage Rifts or any of the games that use the science fiction and superpowers companions, do you have plans on put on putting in some advice on how to use these monsters in a non Battle Lords campaign? Um, we I don't know if I'd say we have advice for a uh, non Battle Wars campaign, but they are designed to be used in any pretty much any Savage Worlds game. So we do have advice uh, in there about um, what adaptations or changes you might want to make to the monsters if you're not running in a game where players have armor or things like that. Because so I guess we kind of do, yeah. Uh, because you know not every game has the armor that Savage Battle Wars or Savage Rifts has. Mm -hmm. And the creatures at the higher levels are designed to basically beat on things with the armor. So we had to make it clear to the, the Savage Worlds gamers, listen, just because your character is a you know a veteran level character it does not mean they're going to be able to take what the tougher monsters in the book because they're designed to essentially tangle with tanks. So mm -hmm. yeah, we but we do we do have some advice like that. 
Yeah, that cer that certainly makes sense. And with that in mind, what would you guys be shooting for as far as a page count for the book? Hey, you want to grab that? Yeah, keep me honest here, Tony. I think we're 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 trying to hit 144, but it might go slightly higher. Yeah, right, right about 144 is what we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. Which, given the, given the details and the fact that you have to account for two systems at once, I can uh, I can understand that. Um, the. And I will, I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it how it develops, as well as anything anything else coming out of the coming out of twenty third century. But with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you guys for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple once again to enjoy the madness that happens here. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Mm -hmm. We appreciate the opportunity. Anytime you see fit to return, whether it's for something else coming out of the coming out of Uncle Ernie's catalog or um or or anything else in the Battle Lords universe, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Sounds like a plan. And of and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>